Hey friends, Peggy Hall back with you from the healthyamerican.org. I love to look at language. In fact, I've been a language teacher for many years, an English teacher. English is a second language. I speak different languages, so I am very attuned to the language. And these hog washers and bamboozlers and evildoers and puppet masters that have been trying to suppress us and oppress us over the last couple of and a half years, well, they have been fiddling with the language, and I'm sure that is no surprise to you. I've compiled a list of words that I've noticed that they've changed over the last several months. And I'm going to share that with you in just a moment. But first, I want to welcome a brand new sponsor to my show. So give me two seconds. We are going to hop right on over here. The website I'd like you to go to is ScreamSiren.com. And I want to tell you about this device that you should carry at all times. And that's because violent crime is at an all-time high. You're more likely now than ever to be attacked while walking down the street, especially if you live in a populated area. In fact, many parts of the nation um, have seen homicides that have increased to as high as 50% and as high as 36% for aggravated assaults. And this is not uncommon anymore, unfortunately. We are seeing crime rise across the nation, but there are vital steps that you can take to save your life and those you love. An attacker's worst enemy is attention. And this is why I highly recommend the Scream Siren. The Scream Siren is the ultimate personal protection alarm. Uh, this requires no training or skills to operate, and it can be used by anyone, regardless of age or physical ability. Ability. The fact of the matter is that victims are often too trauma traumatized to shout or fight back in a dangerous situation. And criminals hate the attention and they will likely run off after realizing when you've got this scream siren and the alarm is going off and it will not stop. So I've got this, I'm carrying it on me, and there are over a hundred thousand other users trusting this scream siren with their life. Imagine the peace of mind that you'll have with this attached to your key ring. So you can try the scream siren risk-free for 90 days. Now here you'll see on the website, it's called scream safe. It's exactly the same product, but I want you to go to screamsiren.com and you can try it risk-free for 90 days and for up to 50% off by clicking the link in the description box below, or I will also have, or you can just go to screamsiren.com and after placing your order, the Scream Siren will be delivered straight to your doorstep. So Scream Safe, it's exactly the same product. Here you go. And I would love for you to get that so that you can have the peace of mind as well. Friends, I want to talk about language, and I've made a list of some of the phrases that the hogwashers, the evildoers, the puppet masters, the bamboozlers are uh, changing. They're changing these words, and I want to see if you are onto it as well. And I would like you to tell me in a comment below what are some of the phrases that you've seen that have been manipulated or changed. I made a list. I'm going to bring up that list, and we will talk about that together. All right. The first phrase that I've seen, and I'm going to show you where I saw it on the CDC, instead of using, and I'm going to say it, I'm going to say the V word. Yes, I'm testing the waters here on YouTube, and I'm not talking about it other than to say the CDC used to have a phrase called fully vaccinated, and that meant that you got the first jab, you got the second jab, and you got the booster. Now, I think they probably want you to keep getting the boosters forever, but right now they've changed fully vaccinated. Do you know what that word is? Do you know what the new phrase is? Let's hear it. I'm going to show it to you. We're going to hop right on over to the CDC website. And this is what they're saying instead of fully vaccinated. They are saying primary series. How do you like them apples? Them are pretty rotten apples. That means you can have a primary series, a secondary series, tertiary series, and on and on and on it goes. So they have actually obliterated the term fully vaccinated because apparently you're never going to be fully vaccinated. And I will just go on record to say, I will never be fully vaccinated because hashtag never have, never will. All right, the next phrase I have, whoops, let's see if you, I want to, cue this up. Let's see. Uh, instead of discrimination, the federal government has said that rather than um, engaging in behavior that is discriminatory, discriminatory, and rather than saying we want you to stop with discrimination, do you know what they're saying? I covered this in a previous video some weeks ago. Instead of discrimination, they're calling it differentiation. Oh, how clever of them. Of course, they're not discriminating against anyone. They're just treating them differently. 
Well, how do you like them apples again? I think I've got a whole lot of rotten apples for you. My goal in this video is for you to be more of a critical thinker and a critical reader. What does that mean? It doesn't mean to criticize. It means to be an analyst, to look at something carefully, to look at all sides of it, and to notice and be aware and read between the lines. All right, the next one. I've been talking about this for about two and a half years, and it's hard for me to even say the word, but because I have a lawsuit that is based on this word, I can say it. I have filed a lawsuit against the Orange County Board of Supervisors because I am requesting a court to mandate, there I said it, I said it, the true use of the word, I am requesting the court to mandate this legislative body, this county government to follow the law. And guess what? The court said they have to follow the law. The court is giving them until December 1st to show that they are following the law or to show why they don't have to follow the law. So they are in a corner and they really can't get out. So that is the true use of the word mandate. I've noticed in my reading and seeing uh, different news articles and so forth that the government is no longer calling this a vaccine mandate. They are calling it a protocol, a policy, a requirement, a strategy, a measure, because a mandate is not a law. And I've been sounding that alarm, as many of you have for the last two and a half years, and my battle cry has been stop saying mandate. And they have. So kudos on that. All right. How about this one? They're no longer calling what we're in, unless you're in California, an emergency. And that's because you know, and I know, and every third grader knows that an emergency does not last for two and a half years. It might last for two and a half days. Maybe I would even give it maybe two weeks at the outset, but an emergency means you didn't have time to prepare. Well, I think after two and a half years, you're able to prepare, unless you're in the state of California where there are a bunch of numbskulls. And instead of the word emergency, they are saying pandemic. Now, I know some of you call it something else. Let me know in a comment below. I better not trip up the sensors here by using those other words that sound like pandemic and are more accurate, right? Like planned, fill in the blank. Um, you know what I'm talking about. So now they're just saying, well, it's not an emergency, but it's a pandemic. Yeah, no. Okay. How about this one? Now they're not even really using the word pandemic because they know that it's no longer that because Biden himself said so. And if Biden said that, then I have to believe him. So now they're just talking about COVID, plain old COVID. No longer are they calling it an emergency or really a pandemic. They're just calling it COVID and they're calling it endemic. Endemic meaning it's going to be with us forever. Well, as uh, adolescent boys probably say, duh, <laughs> right? Or no duh is another expression that really fits here. All right, how about this? Those of you that have applied for your religious exemption, and some of you have asked me about this because you say, Peggy, they're giving me paperwork and it doesn't say a religious exemption for the cooties. Cure, it calls it an exception. So they're giving me an exception. Now I take exception with that word. If I were in your shoes, I wouldn't fight it. I would fly under the radar. I would just chalk it up to ignorance on their part. But I think it goes deeper. Now evil is ignorant, but it's also diabolical. And here's the difference between exemption and exception. An exemption means it does not apply to you. You are exempt. If you are in a wheelchair, you do not have to take the stairs. It is exempt. Walking on the stairs does not apply to you. It's just off the table. An exception means it applies to you, but they are making this one-time change to let it go. You may say, there you go again, Peggy, splitting hairs. It really doesn't matter. Well, it really doesn't matter if you get to keep working and you're unjabbed and you're getting your paycheck, you're absolutely right. And that's how I counsel all of my VIP clients and all of the millions of people that have seen my religious exemption free educational videos here on YouTube. You don't have to spend a penny to save your job and to save your paycheck. People that want my one-on-one -on -one help have invested in my professional services, but it's absolutely uh, available my teaching is available to you for free if you would like that. So I've taught about that exemption and exception, but if you do want to split hairs 
An exception means that they could reapply this to you at any moment because they just gave you a free pass for the moment, where an exemption, it does not apply to you. To dig a little deeper still for your employers that say, well, we're going to be fined unless we have 100% uh, compliance with the cooties jab. Well, you are removed out of their statistics because you are exempt. <laughs> so again, they're so... What's the word that comes to mind? Stupid? Yeah, I, it's such a harsh word. I hate to use it, but it really fills and fits the bill in this case. All right, how about this? I've noticed that the abortionists don't even use the word pro-choice any longer, right? It used to be they would pit the sides of the people against each other, pro-life and pro-choice. Well, the choice they were really pushing was to uh, murder the innocent growing baby. So they really got rid of that because they didn't, really allow or promote choice. And now I've not even seen that phrase pro-choice. What I am simply seeing here in California, especially is reproductive rights. Now, first of all, it doesn't make sense at all because there is no right. Let me, let me back up a little bit. If we're talking about reproduction and abortion is preventing reproduction, then why are they calling it reproductive rights? In fact, California is so progressive, they've even taken it a step further and they've gotten rid of the phrase reproductive rights and they call it abortion rights. Well, as my husband, Pastor David says, there is no such thing as an abortion right. There are only abortion wrongs. And I've done many, 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 many impassioned videos on my view of valuing life and how astounded I am by those who have been defending freedom for the last two and a half years, but then they don't want to defend the freedom of the developing baby. That is a disconnect for me. So the left has completely gotten rid of the phrase pro-choice. Some of them are using the phrase reproductive rights. And in California, they just call it abortion rights. And they go on to say that it is safe and effective. Well, it is definitely effective in killing the baby, not that safe for the baby. If you wanna hear my views on that, I have lots of videos and I even have a playlist. So I'm gonna to have to change, the, I may have to change the title of that playlist to, um, uh pro-life help me help me with the phrase friends um valuing life the importance of life uh the right to life yeah those are more accurate all right those of you that were with me at beach church i did quite a um an emotional oh that's not the right word a very dynamic presentation at beach church on sunday and those public appearances are on my private channel called peggyhall.tv i cannot air them here on youtube because i definitely will get a strike and they'll get taken down so those are over at peggyhall.tv all right another one uh speaking of rights and so forth instead of free speech they call it hate speech. I remember many years ago when California started designating certain crimes as hate crimes. And my lovely mom, God rest her soul in peace, said to me, aren't all crimes hate crimes? And I said, mom, you are exactly right. Once you start elevating certain crimes and saying that this crime was done with this certain intention, it minimizes the other crimes that were done unfairly in my view. And speaking about hate speech, it doesn't matter if it's hate speech. Speech itself doesn't need a modifier. It doesn't need an adjective in front of it. It is speech. And you and I have the right to speak freely, to think freely without restraint. And no, there is no law that says you cannot shout fire in a crowded theater. That was a throwaway line by a Supreme Court justice in, uh, oh gosh, she was one of the worst. And it, his name will come to mind. I, I try to block his name out, if any, Oliver Wendell Holmes, who did so much damage to this country. And he was one of the first that coined the phrase, a clear and present danger. That's my recollection. Well, I wasn't alive at his time, but from my reading and studies. And further, I believe that he's the one that came up with this throwaway line of, well, you can't, shout fire in a crowded theater. Yes, you can. Now you will also, 
experience the consequences of shouting fire, but it has nothing to do with freedom of speech. It has to do with disturbing the peace or interfering with the conduct of business. Those are different um, violations. It has nothing to do with free speech. It's the same thing that I can stand outside a grocery store and I can hold a sign that says, um, you know, don't shop here, their prices are too high. And I am protected in order to say that. But if I go inside the store and I block all of the cash registers and I don't allow anyone to purchase the overpriced food, now it's no longer an issue of free speech. It is an issue of me violating the uh, standard that I am interfering with the conduct of business. So you've got to be, again, a critical thinker, dig deeper, read between the lines. And there's no such thing as hate speech. There is speech. And our speech is protected, unless, of course, you're a doctor who lives in California. And I just did a video on that. I'm going to do a follow-up video on that. Actually, by the time you're watching this, I will have done a follow-up video on that because it got so many comments. And some people um, were sadly um, confused about uh, government control over people, and they were trying to justify it. Stunning. Absolutely stunning. I don't know if they were just ignorant or if they were trolls or out and out haters, but whatever it is, I set the record straight. All right, here we go. Um, you know that in many places, maybe you don't know, they are getting rid of the forms where you can say father's name, like on a birth certificate, and mother's name, and instead it says parents, or maybe not a birth certificate for those of you that don't believe in birth certificates or use them. Let's say for some unknown reason you have a child in a public school and you'll have to fill out the forms and it will say uh, father's name mother's name and now it just says parent one and parent two yes aren't we just our our uh, whole way of life is just progressing isn't it or i mean regressing all right how about this same thing you don't want to say boy or girl so they'll say child because, you know, a girl can be a boy and a boy can be a girl, um, you know, because they're so mature and able to understand that at a young age. And so if they have their genital mutilation in some of the hospitals here in California and around the country at the age of, let's say, nine, and then when they're 19, uh, they realize, wow, I made a mistake. Oh, too late. <laughs> Isn't it interesting that we have tattoo removal services because people that were sure that they wanted something permanently on their body, then they changed their mind? Yeah, I don't think they're going to have genital mutilation relocation services, if you get my drift. I'm going to be doing more coverage on that as well. All right. And of course, uh, there is no such thing as um, global swarming, as I call it. Uh, earlier, back like in the 70s, it was global cooling. Yes, and we were going to be all covered with ice. There was never going to be any more food growing and because science, you know. And uh, then it became global swarming. Well, when they would have their summits and they would have like the biggest ice and snowfall, they decided we better not call it global swarming anymore. So now it's called the climate crisis. And it will be the next emergency. Uh, so buckle up, it's already happening. And I'm going to leave on this one instead of our constitutional republic. They are referring to it as a democracy. I have a video with the difference between a republic and a democracy. So when you hear and see even those um, that are very well known in our freedom movement talking about democracy now and bring back democracy. I did a whole video on the divider in chief and how he used the word democracy like 30 plus times in his uh, bumbling speech. And at the end of the speech, he said, God bless America, democracy, goodbye. I mean, I, obviously, like my husband says, if he's if Biden is a robot, AI has a long way to go. But this incessant push, Nancy Pelosi was talking about saving democracy, uh, you know, in China, in the United States is like, yeah, you better. I so I hope everybody will watch that video. No, we are a republic. And we are restrained by the Constitution, and democracy is one hop, skip, and jump away from socialism, one hop, skip, and jump away from communism. I'm saying it again. It's stunning to me how many, well, I'm not going to say they're healthy Americans, but how many misguided individuals are banging the drum 
of communism. They think it's awesome. And they actually criticize me for using that phrase, which is kind of a catch-all phrase for totalitarianism, authoritarianism, fascism, tyranny, just throw it all in the same bucket. And by the way, I'm speaking of Chinese communism because they have their own brand with their own flair. And I have a video all about that as well. All right, friends. Always great to be with you. Thank you so much for being on board. And you can get more on my uh, newsletter, which is the health. Actually, if you go to the website, thehealthyamerican.org, and you click on the newsletter uh, tab, and you can sign up. And that way, you can hear from me, even if these social platforms go down. Always great to have you on board. Big shout out to our moderators, keeping the stream flowing, and everyone that subscribes, likes, shares, and leaves a comment. It helps us outwit that <laughs> the nitwits. <laughs> All right. Thanks everybody. I'll see you soon in another broadcast.